Hi everybody and welcome to the Dixie Belle Paint YouTube channel. My name is Jodie Flavel from Jodie Flavel Art and today, 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 I am going to be doing some cool stuff with this really cool old vintage vinyl player. It's pretty old, it's actually not in working condition anymore unfortunately, so I feel okay painting it. <laughs> and yeah, it's just such a very good, well made piece. And today I'm going to be painting it in Dixie Bell's Terra Clay paint. And also I am going to be using one of their brand spanking new decoupage papers. So stay tuned for that. Dixie Bell have also released these brand new four ounce pots of their paint. And these are awesome if you want to just kind of have a go at colour and have a go at the paint without fully committing to paying for like a big tub. So these are awesome as little trial tubs, um, you know, for you to decide whether or not it's the paint and the colour for you. So I am starting with terra clay paint and this is the London blue colour that I'm going to be using today. And I'm also going to show you just how far this paint can go because it can go pretty far. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is stipple this on. I'm going to put a fair amount on my brush because I want this to be quite textured. And what I mean by stippling is that I'm literally just going to dab this on this way, okay? So this is going to create a lot of texture by doing this. And what I'm using here is just one of Dixie Bell's cheap chip brushes. So these maybe are about $2, very cheap, but because they have the natural bristles, it means that I'm going to get more texture they're going to be more stipply and scratchy as I paint this on. I'm going to be doing the same thing all over this piece. So I'm going to be using my London Blue to stipple and create that gorgeous blue texture on all of the outside of the piece today. So as I'm stippling, I'm also making sure to just keep moving the brush in different directions so I'm not just doing it like this, all in one direction, otherwise you're just gonna get this very flat kind of finish. Um, it'll still be a tiny bit textured, but it won't be very, it won't look very interesting. So by turning my brush like this a little bit as I stipple, it just makes things look a little bit more interesting. Don't be scared to go over big chunks of paint as well. So I have a big chunk of paint right here. I'm just going to stipple right over it. And that will also help create more texture as the paint starts to dry a little bit. I just finished the piece and I have this much paint left in my little pot. I've barely used any at all and I haven't been stinchy with it, you know, I've used quite a bit. And also I've only needed one, one coat to do that with. So this is what I mean, it's very thick and it goes really far. If you paint dries, you might notice it starts to go a little bit lighter. That's just the clay and it's totally fine. And when we get to clear coat in the piece, all of the original color will come back through. On this, I've just left this little bit here because obviously it's quite cool. And I don't want to cover up those knobs and those little bits of writing and things. Okay, so now that this is all dry, I'm going to go in with some flat coat. So this is Dixie Belle's clear flat coat. I'm just gonna put one layer at the moment all over it. And what this is going to do is it's just going to seal in this paint. So this paint can be really easily reactivated. So if you go in there with any decorative finishes and you add any little bit of water or anything that can reactivate it, then it's a good idea just to um, top coat it first, just to make sure that paint's locked in and that's not gonna happen. For this, I'm going to be using the mini brush, which is a synthetic brush. And this means that I'm going to get a very nice, smooth, finish with it because these brushes are amazing for reducing brush strokes. Hey guys, right, so this 
is the new decoupage paper by Dixie Belle, which I'm going to be putting on the top of this today, which I think will look really cool. You ready? Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> okay, so this is quite an attitude. It's got loads of attitude, this uh, decoupage paper. It's called Vintage Tattoo and yeah, it's very, very, very cool. Looks quite rock and roll. I'll open it for you now and you can see the whole thing. You get quite a lot. It's quite a big sheet of paper. And there we are. So that's why I decided to use the vinyl plier because, you know, it can like, because they're kind of cool and old school on their own. So I thought adding this to, on top of it will look even more kind of rock and roll. Rock and roll. Wait, no, that's fine. Wait. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. First thing that I'm gonna do is go back to my flat clear coat and just put a nice decent layer. Let's go find a hair there. <laughs> I've molted. Just put a nice decent layer on top of this piece, giving it really good coverage. Okay, just like that. I should have probably done this part before, but I'm now just going to figure out where, what image I actually want on the piece. I really love the mermaid, so I'm definitely going to be having her it around that would be helpful so I want to make her a vocal point kind of like this love part here as well so make sure her head's on it I'm not bothered about creases if you are you can always get some parchment paper and then iron over the top of this once a uh, the glue and the top coat is dried but I'm happy with the creases because that's just the way I roll <laughs> it's just my kind of look so now I've smoothed that on it's going to lift it up a little I don't want really really thick creases if you have a really thick crease like this just go in there just pull it ever so slightly and then just put some more clear coat on top and it should make the crease disappear as it gets wetter, don't pull it too much, otherwise you are just going to tear the decoupage paper. I'm just gonna keep working at it. This is gonna look vintage anyway, so as I say, the creases I am more than happy to keep. If you're not happy with the creases, then you could just iron them out, that shouldn't be a problem. It almost looks sometimes like I'm only doing like half a job by not ironing. Um, and by not dampening them down, but honestly, it is just genuinely the way I like my decoupage most of the time because of those oldie worldy finishes that I do and those vintage rustic type of finishes that I love. So I'm just gonna go around the edges now, making sure the edges are nice and sealed, but also a little bit wet. Here I have a little bit of sandpaper that I've cut off. I'm just gonna fold that up. And I'm going to pull again slightly and I'm just going to use this around the edges. Again, again, if you want a neater piece, a much crisper piece, then make, you can use a Stanley knife or you can even measure it out, you know, what you need and then put it on as a perfectly measured piece of paper. But again, I like the vintage style, like it rustic. So I'm happy to do it this way. It suits me. Should find it pulls off quite nicely. You can then just pull it down. I'm just gonna pull these edges off. Just any rough edges. And then what I am going to do with my clear coat again is just blend those edges in and make sure it's nice and tightly on there. We don't want any lifting up 
as this dries. So I'm using some black glaze. It does look blue when you first you start using it. But honestly, it dries really, really black. I love it. I'm using a chip brush again, just one of the cheap ones. I kind of want it to look smoky and scratchy. So I'm not looking for a very smooth finish here. So I'm going to kind of try and keep it in one direction, but also I'm okay if, you know, there's a little bit of variation in the way the brush is stroke. And I'm just going to, where the brush is stroke, where the, where the brush strokes go. And I'm just going to put this all over where the paint is. I'm gonna put a little bit over the handle here as well. Because I've already clear coated it, it means that the glaze won't sink into the clay paint. It'll sit on top. Um, also, it means I won't have to clear coat it again. The glaze will be absolutely fine without needing to be sealed. So maybe you can see here now we've got this kind of variations in light and dark going on because I wasn't too perfect with the glaze. So it's created that very rustic look and made it look very aged. We've also got, if I bring you in closer, some texture going on here and that's from the stippling of the clay paint. Next up, I have the silk screen stencils and I'm using this steampunk one. I'm going to be using these patterns here, I think, and I have some copper paint, the patina paint, and we're gonna be creating some rust now just to add extra rusticness to this. Just like that, just like that. 